Amen. You know, it is amazing, really, everything what's happened uh, in the service this morning. But I was laughing for the brother that, uh, because he wants to go to Israel and to be baptized in the Jordan River. So the Jordan River, it's uh, really deep, so he doesn't need you know, to bend or whatever, you know. <laughs> well, it was uh, fun. But, um, yeah, anyways, uh, I was really, you know, for a few days, I was, like, nervous because I'm planning, you know, to go visit my family back home in Israel. So I will be in a few days, you know, I will be there. And uh, it's really, you know, very emotional because the last time that, you know, I was in Israel, it's, uh, I think, 11 or 12 years ago. But, um, you know, everybody, it's not the same. My nieces, you know, they, I think in that time, like 13, 15 years old, and one of them now, she is married, and she have a daughter, four years old daughter, and another son. So it's really, but, you know, the most is my mom. I miss her a lot. And even though that, you know, every morning that, you know, I will call her, if I don't call her, she will call my sister here and my two brothers, uh, what's happened with me, why, you know, what, if anything, you know. But my mom, you know, she's every day, she will tell me what to cook for you, what to cook for you, what, what you miss. And I said, no, just, you know, I miss you. I want to spend time with you. And my another brother, uh, he likes to, to go like once a week to the Sea of Galilee for fishing. And this fishing, it's, you know, back home, um, our uh, culture or custom, you will go fishing during the night, not the daytime. So my brother already, you know, he planned uh, the day that, you know, me and him will go to the Sea of Galilee, and he will be fishing, but, you know, the night, you know, like, you know, he will leave home at six and will come back, like, uh, the next day, five, six o'clock in the morning. So it will be fun that, you know, again, you know, it's all this, like, in my heart, just, you know, I want to see my family for one reason, just, you know, to spend time with them, with, them, with the Lord, with them you know, to share what God is doing in my life and to listen, you know, what God is doing in their life. That, you know, me and them, you know, yes, you know, we'll go fishing, but the Sea of Galilee, you know, there is a lot of memories, you know, in the Bible that Jesus, you know, he spent three years in his ministry, you know, in Capernaum and around the Sea of Galilee. So the Sea of Galilee, you know, for me, it's the most beautiful, peaceful way, a place, you know, to be. It's not like Jerusalem or Nazareth you know, according to the Bible, but actually always, you know, I will experience, you know, God's peace and just, you know, God's wonderful presence. It's so beautiful. So I cannot, you know, wait that, you know, me and my brother, you know, to go there and to spend the night, the night there, you know, just, you know, reading the, the word of God and to go through everything that Jesus, you know, he did in the Sea of Galilee, all these miracles, you know, in Capernaum and meeting the, uh, Mary the Magdalene and all this. So it will be a really good time. And I have another sister that she is on fire for God. She used to be a bus driver, but before she had, she went through a hard time in her life. And it was years ago. She went through very hard divorce and she was depressed, like she lost everything. And she will call me the, the middle of the night. She will tell me, brother, I cannot sleep. I cannot sleep. I can't, you know, I'm in pain. I'm in agony. I'm in you know, it's very hard. So I said, don't worry, you know, I will get up from my bed because the next day, you know, I need to be ready, you know, to go to work. But I said, no, this is my calling and she's my sister, you know, I will go. So I will spend one hour, two hours with her, you know, kneeling next to her bed and crying to God, just, you know, God you know, will, will touch her and heal her and all this stuff. So days after days and nights after nights, you know, I remember, but, you know, God changed her. And she become on fire for God that later she become bus driver. And she was in that area, Nazareth and the north of Israel. She was the first lady that she, she become bus driver. And uh, guess what? You know, for I think for I don't know how many years you know, she was bus driver. But the, the most is that uh, all the um, passengers, you know, when she locked the door, she will tell everybody, you are not going nowhere. I'm, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. And, uh, you know, there is uh, Jewish, of course, Hebrew, you know, she will speak Hebrew. There is Russians, there is Muslim. So everybody in the bus, you know, she will listen to her because there is no way that, you know, they will get out of the bus. <laughs> but um, uh, she is very, very, and she told me already that, you know, she's, uh, she's planning uh, one day, me and her alone, just, you know, to go to Bethlehem and Jerusalem, just, you know, to visit all these places and to share, you know, again, you know, what God is doing. 
And this is my heart that, you know, God, you know, he told us, you know, to start in Jerusalem. And many times, you know, we forget Jerusalem. We forget that Jerusalem is our home. We need to start in our home. And uh, when uh, Pastor Larry, you know, he told me that, you know, I'm going to speak. Uh, really, you know, I don't want to. But, uh, but when I look in the calendar, l- listen to this. When I look in the calendar, I said, wow, this is God. Why? Because just uh, Friday and Saturday, we celebrate in Israel the feasts of the weeks. What, what is this? It's 50th day after the resurrection. And we celebrate Friday, Saturday, the day of Pentecost. So I said, you know what? This is my favorite uh, thing you know, to, sh- to speak you know, about. This is my compassion and passion and my heart is to speak about the Holy Spirit and about the anointing of the Holy Spirit and about God's presence. Because I believe that you know, all of us, doesn't matter you know, how old, if we are 10 years old or 100 years old, you know, we need this, uh, the flame or the fire of the Holy Spirit again in our lives. And this is what we need. And, uh, you know, just, you know, I was praying and just, you know, God burned my heart. Um, You know, my experience way before, just, you know, I will share a little bit. That um, I get saved when I get saved. I get saved in a Baptist church in 1983. So the Baptists, you know, at that time, um, some of them, it's changed, you know. But in that time, you know, they believe in the filling of the Holy Spirit and all this. But they doesn't believe, you know, in Acts 2 because they said that. Um, you know, it's done because uh, the apostles and when the Bible complete uh, written, so there is no need and all this. But, um, but God, even through this time, just God, you know, he m- moved in my life mightily that, you know, I will go villages and towns and home by, by, by home to tell them, you know, what God, you know, he's did, he did in my life. So uh, maybe, you know, I shared, but, you know, I shared a little bit again that... Um, People, you know, getting saved, Muslims, Orthodox Jewish, rabbis, or whatever, you know, I will go. People just, God, amazing what he can do. So the Baptist uh, pastor, he's my uncle. Uh, He went to be with the Lord like uh, four or five years ago, I believe. So people, you know, they will come to church, you know, background Muslims or Jewish or whatever, you know. And he was scared that, you know, people, they will come and they will kill me. You know, but um, one day, you know, he came and he says, do you know what, you know, I think that, you know, you need to go to Bible college. He wants to get rid of me. But I know, I said, fine, you know, I will go wherever because really, you know, in that time and always, you know, I, I said, you know, I'm willing to die for you, Jesus. You died on the cross for me and I will die for you. And th- this is my life. And um, he sent me to Bible college like, you know, I was maybe three, four months old only, you know, with baby with the Lord. But in that time, and always my heart was on fire for God. Just, you know, I want to tell everybody, you know, about Jesus. I don't care, you know, about my life. You know, I will be killed. Doesn't matter for me. But uh, he sent, you know, they sent me to Bible college. But the Bible college for me, it was always, you know, I said, is my upper room. And this is my favorite. There is, you know, favorite, my favorite places, you know, in, especially in Jerusalem. But one of these places that always, you know, I will go is the upper room where God, you know, he poured out his Holy Spirit on the 120 disciples. So, you know, I would go there, pray, and I was really like, uh, they will call me John the Baptist. And uh, it's okay, maybe some of you too, but it's okay. I still love you. But, um, but you know what? Um, one time, a pastor, he is Church of God. He's from Germany, but he have that church in Jerusalem. And he came to me and he says, Brother, can I say something to you? I, I said, well, yes. And he says one thing, and this hit me. And he says, do you know what? Do you believe in God? I said, yes, absolutely. I believe in him. And he says, why you don't pray? If this is from God, he will give you. If not, not. And I agreed. And he says, are you going to do it? I said, yes, absolutely. This is what I will do. So I waited, you know, the weekend till everybody left home. And I stayed by myself in the Bible college. It wasn't that time a small, you know, building. It's not a big building. But anyways, uh, I stayed and I said, you know, I will fast. And I fasted for a few days and just I was on my face crying to God. God, because this is what I learned, you know, through the Bible. And I shared, you know, with some of you that when I go to the promises of God in the Bible and, you know, I, I love, you know, to challenge God. God, you know, my God, he loves, you know, to be challenged. He loves, you know, to tell him that you said, you see. And there is many in the Bible that man of God and the woman of God, that they pray the same prayer. 
So they will come to God and they will say, Lord, you said, not me or not anyone else or not Pastor Larry, but God, you know, he says, when God, you know, he says something, I believe from all my heart, you know, he, me, he, he meant what he's saying and he will do what he says. He promised something, he will do it. Doesn't matter what. Even sometimes, you know, in our human nature will say how. Uh, for us, how? But for him, is, there is nothing is impossible for God. So I prayed. And I was honest with God and honest with myself. And, you know, I believe from all my heart, you know, when we come to God, honesty. And always, you know, I said, you know, don't tell God, you know, when you have something in your life, sin or sickness or whatever, don't tell God, you know, how, how good he is. God, you know, he knows. Don't tell God, you know, how beautiful he is. He knows. Don't tell God that, you know, how wonderful he is. He knows everything. So when we come to God, always, you know, I said, sometimes, you know, it's hard. But you know what? This is the only way to learn. Always, you know, I said, when, when I come to God, you know, I will tell him. If, I'm, if I have anything in my life and I need to be changed, I will tell God, change my life. And then, you know, I will thank him. But not the way around. So on that night, it was night, hours. You know, I, I, I was in my face. And I remember exactly what's happened that like around two o'clock in the morning something happened i don't want to share you know the experience because everyone you know we have their we have our own experience with the lord uh, because you know I, I don't want you know to become formula or recipe or whatever but there you know two o'clock in the morning after praying and crying to god and putting the bible you know in front of me and i will tell god god this is your promise this is the father this the the Father promised for the church that he will pour out his Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. And uh, there, you know, something happened in my life that changed everything. And I, the next day, you know, it was different. I was different, absolutely different. And uh, even though that, you know, all these months before that, you know, I was going out and preaching the gospel, winning souls for Jesus and seeing miracles, you know, happen and all this. But now it was different. And this is what I'm going you know, to share with you. It's about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is real. It's not something. Sometimes, you know, in our lives, you know, in the church as, as Christians or as believers or as Pentecostal, you know, how many Pentecostal believing in this, uh, in this uh, place? Maybe there is many. But you know what? Sometimes in our life we start talking about God as story. As he was, you see, in the Old Testament or the book of Acts or what he did 100 or 200 years ago, or what he did, you know, in the revivals, how many times, you know, around the, the, the world and this, can, this country, like in the 17, 1800s and the early 1900s. So we start talking about God as God, he is dead. And I believe from all my heart that, you know, this is her God's heart because our God, my God and your God, he is alive. And the Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And the word of God, and Jesus, you know, he said that heaven and earth will go away, but his word, his promises will stay forever. So this is what I believe from all my heart. And this is the message that, you know, God, he burned my heart, you know, for all this time that, you know, to share, you know, about him. I love, you know, to, to speak something. And always, you know, I said to anyone that when you speak, speak from your own experience. Don't say something that you never taste because the Bible says taste and see how God is good when we test him when I test him then you know I can share about the goodness of God the mercy of God the grace of God the power of God the blood of Jesus the healing anything that you know I experience you know I can share with others and guess what this will work and guess what the people they will understand and the people they will believe me that you know I'm not telling them stories but I'm telling them me that God he changed my life and, you know, to be standing this morning here, I'm not ashamed of anything because I know for whom I am believed. Because he is the one that, you know, he hold me. And he is the one that he promised me. And he is the one that he saved me. And he is the one that he done the cross for me. So Jesus, you know, the last Sunday, it was a powerful message. God touched my heart. Because what the Pastor Larry, and, you know, I love, I met few in my life man of God and woman of God, that always, you know, I will share, you know, with the prayer group here. I said, you know, God, you know, he put me with people that I can smell Jesus. I can see Jesus. I, they can, they, you know, when they speak, you know, they will speak Jesus. When they breathe, they will breathe Jesus. So this is wonderful. And this is what I want. All these years, I want to be the same. So Pastor Larry, you know, the last Sunday, you know, when he preached, you know, 
what, what God, you know, put in his heart, you know, to preach and they share, you know, about, about Peter. That, you know, when he said that, you know, all of us, you know, we fell. Some, many times in our life, you know, just, you know, to be honest. Doesn't matter what or how or how deep or how bad or whatever. And he, the first one, he was crying, you know, here in the pulpit. And he, the first one, you know, he went and he knelt down. You think that, you know, we need invitation? You know, we cannot sometimes, you know, some, it's okay, you know, to be hard. You know, Jesus, you know, he was hard many times in the Bible. You think that, you know, to, to come to the altar for five minutes, it's too much for us? But to go to the restaurant, you know, after the church, to spend there two, three hours talking and laughing, it's okay? Where is Jesus? Why we cannot, you know, come to the altar to pray and to be, you know, to be clean with God? You see? Why it's not? What is our hunger and thirst, you know, for him? We said that, you know, we love him, but how much we love him? We love him enough that, you know, to leave everything for him, to forsake everything for him, to pick up the cross, our cross every day and to follow him every day? You think that it's hard? We need invitation? We need somebody, you know, to tell us, please come to the altar and pray and lay your life? I don't think so. Because, you know, the people that, you know, I believe from all my heart, and this is the message that, you know, I will share a little bit. When Jesus, you know, he, he said in Acts 1.8, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you will be a witness. You know, I, I experience all this, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all, all the world. You know, God, you know, he opened the doors for me, and if I will be there, you know, in Israel, you know, and sending to come to America, believe me, I will be in many, many countries ar around the world. But for one reason, because God, you know, he knows my heart. And always, you know, I said, as you said, you know, about da King David, that this man, he is after me. This is what I want to be. This is my heart. This is the cry of my heart. To be my heart is to be for Jesus. You know, in the Muslim country in Indonesia today, I heard four million or maybe, no, sorry, it's in Egypt, four million Muslims, they come to Jesus. In Indonesia, they said that two million Muslims, they converted every year, they're coming to Jesus. You see, in Egypt, four million Muslims. In Jordan, in the Palestinian area, in Gaza, many, they're coming to Jesus. You think that, you know, they will care? They will, if somebody, you know, will put uh, a gun in their head and they will tell them, deny Jesus, they will say, oh, you, okay, you know, I will deny Jesus. You see, but we are here, you know, just, you know, I will say, Lord, have mercy. You know, through, through uh, you know, years ago, you know, I remember when God, you know, he called me to the ministry and I start, I don't know how, but God, you know, he opened the door for me. You know, in Israel, it is, it's almost 80% Jewish and the rest, Christians, very little, Orthodox or, uh, or Catholics, like 100,000 from the nine, th nine million population in Israel, and there is, there is Muslim. There is tons of Muslims in, Yisra in Israel, and they are they having the Israeli citizenship. But um, when God, you know, he called me years ago, um, and God, you know, opened the door, and I don't know why, and I shared maybe before that, you know, I hate the Muslims, because, you know, all the doing, and all their life, and the wars, and the killing, and shooting, and all this, and suiciders, and how, how to love them. But, you know, after, you know, I... I get saved and God, you know, changed my life and all this. I don't know how, but this miracle from God that, you know, to go to your enemy, what, what the Bible says, you will be a witness in Samarita. Samarita. You know, the Samaritan, they are enemies with the Jewish. They are not friends. But anyways, you know, when I went there and I start telling them, you know, about Jesus and people, they start getting saved. Like I remember in maybe six, seven months, at least 150 Muslims, they converted to Christianity. They came to know Jesus. And I remember that one or two for sure, because in, in Muslim always, you know, we read in that time in the news that somebody will be killed. They call it the Muslim. They will shoot the, their daughter or their sister or their brother, and they will call it the owner of the family without, you know, giving any, any reason why this man or this woman or this lady, she get killed by her family. But you know what? I know for sure that at least one person that, he came to Jesus and he got killed because of his faith, faith in Jesus. You see, it's not sad, but you know what? It's sad for us. Because this person, you know, he went to be with the Lord or she went to be with the Lord. And they paid. They know that, you know, there is price, you know, to pay. 
Sometimes you know, in our life that you know, we come to Jesus and we think everything, it will be fun. That God, you know, he will fix all my problems. My kids, my wife, my husband, my neighbors, my everything, just, you know, God, he left everything just for you. Just, you know, to please you and to make everything easy in your life. But this is absolutely wrong. The Bible said that, you know, Jesus, he came to save the lost. Not to make us better. No, because there is no one better in the Bible. The Bible said that everyone is sinned. You see? Everyone needs the glory of God. Everyone needs forgiveness. If everyone, you know, needs healings and deliverance. There is no God, you know, Jesus, you know, when he came, he says, no. I'm not going to fix your problems. When they ask him, you know, questions, you know, about the inheritance or anything, he says, no. You will figure it out, not me. I came, you know, here to die on the cross for you, not uh, to tell you what money and what life, you know, you need to take. No. You see, deny yourself and carry the cross and follow me. This is what Jesus, and this is my Bible, what says. So let's go back a little bit. This is just, uh, just a little bit. <laughs> Oh, why well, Pastor Larry is laughing. So we celebrate, you know, in Israel, just, you know, I will give you a little bit background that I love, you know, the feasts because not, you know, to teach about them because Jesus, he is all, always there in the Old Testament. So we can read, you know, about the feasts of the weeks, you know, in the Bible in Numbers 28, verse 26 and Leviticus 23, verse 15 to 22 and Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 10. So they call it uh, not only the feasts of the weeks, the 49 days or the 50th days, but they will call it Simhat Torah. Simhat Torah, it's in Hebrew, when Moses, he, he received the law in the mountain. And there in the mountain, the Bible said that God, you know, he told Moses, before you will come out, tell every human being in Israel or even the animals, they cannot even come close to the mountain or touch the mountain because God, you know, he will, he's coming down with fire in the mountain, the top of the mountain. So this is what Moses, you know, he did. He told the Israelites that don't touch the mountain, don't be close to the mountain, because anyone, he will be killed by God. So they learned the lesson. So Moses, you know, he will, went up to the mountain, and God, you know, he came down with, and the Bible said that, you know, all the mountain was shaken with fire, with thunders, was mighty presence of God. So this is what, in the, in the Old Testament, you know, about this feast, or when Moses, you know, he received the, the, um, the law fr by, from God. So what, what is, you know, going to say, you know, about us today? You know, up after how many thousands of years? 3,600 or 700 years. What is, what's happened in the book of Acts chapter 2? Why, you know, all this, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit? Why uh, sometimes, you know, in our life, just, you know, we'll think, you know, about the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the Holy Spirit, just, you know, we'll think about speaking tongues and power. You see, what about the rest? This is God, just you know, speak in tongues and power. Because many of us to, today, and I am guilty with this the same way, that we, need, we want the gifts that to use God, not that God, he will use me. You see, we'll start talking about speaking tongues and all this and prophecy, and thus said the Lord in King James Version, like you know, God, and he doesn't know any other version or the King James Version. We, we, you know, we like you know, to be smart, but you know what? We lost the point of the Acts 2, of the baptism and the filling of the Holy Spirit. Because you know, the disciples they knew, according to the Old Testament, about the fire of God, about God's presence, so they learn it. God, he changed their life, and I believe the same this morning. I believe that you know, there are people here in this, in this place, they are hungry and thirsty for God. Because Jesus, you know, he says in Matthew 5, 6, blessed doors. They are hunger and thirst for righteousness. Because his promise is not just you know, to be hungry and to go back home hungry. No. But he will fill us. You see, if you will come to church and you are the same person, you, when you go to church, that means is wrong with you, not with God. Because God always, he wants to change us and to touch us. You see, if you need healing or deliverance or salvation, is your problem. Because God's presence. And the other day with the prayer group, I shared, you know, there's two people in the Bible, in the Old Testament. One, one of them, Jacob, and the other one, Simon. Or not Simon, uh, Samson, sorry. And um, Jacob, you know, he was in God's presence, but he says, wow, I'm in the house of God. But it's a scary place. And uh, Samson, the other side of the story, that Samson, 
he thought that, you know, she told him, uh, Delilah, and we need to, to watch out, you know, from Delilah and Jezebel, because there is many. But uh, anyways, um, she told him, the Palestinians, they're coming after you, Samson. And he, the Bible says, scary part. And he thought that he will do the same as the day before and the day before and the day before. But he doesn't know that God, he depart away from him. You see, what caused him? Blind? To be like an animal for two, three years? Watch out. Sin will kill. Because this, you know what the Bible says in Romans? The wages of sin is death. Penalty. But anyways, I don't know why I went there, but I believe that um, maybe some of us, you know, want to hear this. But the Jewish people, you know, in that time in, in the Old Testament, they was like... Um, proud of God's presence, to see God, pillar of fire and the cloud during the day. God's presence, you know, always there with them. So there was really, you know, proud of everything. You know, God, you know, he chose the Israelites, you know, to, to be in the midst of them, to walk with them, to feed them, to take care of them. So what's now, you know, I will talk now a little bit about the day of Pentecost. So as for me, as when I, when I read you know, the Old Testament and the New Testament you know, about the Holy Spirit and about God's presence, when God and He came down from the mountain, what's happened? The mountain was shaking. The fire of God, the thunders, earthquake. So what's happened in the book of Acts? It was the same, but it was different. I believe from all my heart, you know, when we have God's presence in our lives and we come to Him, our human nature will be shaking. You see? Our hearts and mind will be changed in God's presence. We'll be more sensitive to, to God's presence. We will be sensitive more to the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because the Bible said that don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, you know, He can. You see? And this is exactly what's happened with Saul. I shared, you know, a few days ago with the pastor and with the people that, you know, what's the difference? And, you know, there is a reason that, you know, when God, you know, He will put something in our hearts you know, to share, but, you know, it's happened with me first. Always, you know, I, I believe what the difference between the anointing of King Saul and the anointing of King David. There is a big difference. And this is what my, my passion and this is my, my heart and this is the message that what God, you know, he put in my heart for this morning. That the difference is Saul, King Saul, yes, you know, he gets changed, but he gets changed from outside. You see? Saul, the Bible said that, you know, he's among the prophets. He was prophesying, not prophesying, you know, that that said the Lord. No, he was praying, worshiping, you see, interceding, you know, for the nation. It's not prophesying, you know, prophesying, you know, for the future. But King David, when you have the anointing, and it's different, you know, the, the anointing of King Saul, the Bible says Samuel, the prophet, he used a can or bottle of oil, and he poured out and he get anointing as a king of, for Israel, King Saul. Because if you read that chapter before, in 1 Samuel chapter 9, because the people of Israel, they reject God to be a king. You see, and this is our problem today. Because the Bible says, you know, not only to believe that Jesus, you know, he the Savior, and Jesus, you know, he done the cross for us, but Jesus, he is the Lord. You see, and this is the difference that, you know, the apostles in the book of Acts, always you will see, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You see, when Saul, he met Jesus in the way to Damascus, in Acts, what's happened? He says, Lord, what you want me to do? He changed the lordship. He was under the Satan power, and then, you know, he says, Lord. He changed, and this is what, I, you know, I love, and sometimes, you know, why this happened with our, in our lives. If we believe that, you know, we are Christians, and we are believers, and we are the follower, followers of Jesus, then why, you know, the Bible says clearly that he transferred us from death to life, from darkness to light. You see, from, from monsters to good. You know, he changed us. So what's the problem in us today? Are we still believing the same God, or is different? Or we need you know, to put the God according to our feelings and emotions and thinking. So we'll see, you know, I will go back uh, to Acts 2 just, you know, a little bit. So the thing in that, you know, for the disciples, you know, in Acts 2, we see a lot of things, you know, happen. You know, number one, you know, 
I don't want you know, to miss it that, you know, 120, Jesus, you know, he told them. And he told them direct to the disciples, don't leave Jerusalem till you receive the power from the highest. Right. And all the disciples we know, the 12 disciples, one of them, he commits suicide and he finishes life by himself. And this is what Pastor Larry, and this is, you know, hit me, Pastor Larry, what you shared the, the, the last Sunday. That what the difference between Peter and Judah. Peter, yes, you know, he denied Jesus. He cares, he lied, he everything. But he went out and he wept bitterly. You see, the altar is not for just to receive blessing. The altar is to confess you know, our sins. You see, to be right with God. This is the altar. When the people, you know, they, they will fall under the power of God is not for a blessing. You see, when we say that to be slain, the spirit means that God, you know, he will cut your neck. That means you are not alive anymore. You will be dead. This is what I believe. Through, through, through the Bible from the Old Testament and the New Testament and through my personal experience with the Lord, how the, how the, how the Holy Spirit, you know, he will move in our lives. But anyway, you know, the, Jesus, you know, he told them, go to Jerusalem and stay in the upper room. Because m most of them, they are from Galilee. And Galilee, you know, the Sea of Galilee, it's far away from Nazareth. It's about 20 minutes driving, so it's not far from my hometown. So Jesus, you know, he told them, and they know that, you know, if they will go back from the Sea of Galilee to Jerusalem, you know, the Jewish people, they are ready to kill them. It's not fun for the disciples, you know, to obey the Lord, but they have to. And I believe from all my heart in you know, God, protection was over every one of them. That no human being can touch the building or anything where they were in that time hiding from the Jewish. This is what, what the Bible says. They were scared and the doors was locked. And the upper room will go, brother, when we go to, when we, when we go to gather into to Israel. You will see the upper room. And uh, this one, my, my favorite place is you know, to go in Jerusalem. Plus, uh, the city of David and David's tomb, just, you know, just, you know, to, I love, I don't know why, but God, you know, he make, makes me this way that just, you know, I, I will meditate, you know, in the word of God. And the word of God becomes so real, you know, to me. People, you know, they will ask me how you know, how you know, you know what? Spend time with the Lord and his word. Love him and you will see what God, you know, he can do in your life. How God, you know, first, number one, change me. And then, you know, all this will come. So Jesus, you know, he told the disciples, don't leave Jerusalem till you receive. And sometimes in you know, our life, we'll go do that, the work of God, and then, you know, we'll come back and say, Lord, please bless me. You see, sometimes, you know, we'll put the way around. Or we'll start, not in the right way, what Jesus, you know, he says. He says, go. And Jesus, you know, many times in our life, you know, we have this problem. Jesus, you know, God, you know, he told Elijah, he says, go and hide yourself. What? You know, I'm prophet. And I'm good preacher and pastor and all this. Go hide myself where? And I was in that place many, many times where God and he told Elijah to hide. A small river or a creek, fresh water, you know, he can eat, he can drink the water there. It's desert. It's not, you know, mountains and with trees and like uh, whatever it is. No. And, but you know what God and he told him? Go and hide yourself for three years. And then our mentality, you know, will say, oh, you know, what about the people in, in Pueblo? You know, they will die without Jesus, and they will this, and they need us. And you know what? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. To wait upon the Lord doesn't mean that, you know, to be lazy. To, be, to wait, that's mean God, and he wants to do miracles first in my life. Before, you know, I will go and I'll start telling people, you know, about Jesus. So Elijah, you know, God, and he told them. And, and Jesus, the same way that he told the disciples, don't leave Jerusalem. If the disciples, you know, they broke Jesus' word or command to them and they left, all of them, they will be killed. We don't have church anymore. But you know what? They knew the promises because when he stayed with them for 40, 40 days, the Bible says, appearing to them and feeding them and teaching them all about the kingdom of God. So they learned from the prophets in the Old Testament about Joel. That God in the, in the last days, he will pour out his Holy Spirit. And when we read it, it's not just you know, for 22,000 years ago, but this is for every day in our lives. Because the fire of God and the presence of God is still the same. It's never changed in our life. So Jesus, you know, he told the disciples, stay in, the, in Jerusalem till you receive the power from the highest. So they went. But the beautiful things about it that, you know, we know that disciples before, 
Pastor Larry, that, you know, they have division, you know, who's better and who's not better and who's the leader and do all, all this. You know, we know when John and James and all this, they will come to Jesus, where we, are we going to sit next to you, Jesus, or in the kingdom or what? So this is their mentality. Even in Acts 1, if you read it, their, ment- their, their question to Jesus, when are you coming back? and you will be king over Israel. This is their mentality. But after this Acts 2, what's happened, everything is changed. And the only thing that, you know, this will change in our life, one thing, when we spend time with him. You see? If God and he change their minds, they change their thoughts, they change everything, and wasn't, hard, wasn't easy for them. I know that. Wasn't easy you know, for the disciples, you know, to, to be changed like this. No more, no more Jesus that, you know, he's, he's there that to be a king over Israel and to to drive out the Romans' power. No. But Jesus, when he told them, and they stayed in the upper room for 10 days, the Bible says, in unity. You see? One court, one heart, one mind, one soul, one everything. You know, this will take work. You see? If you want to see, you know, the power of God and the revivals, this will take work. You see? It's not coming easy way. No. Because division is not from God. God, you know, Jesus, you know, he prayed in John 17. When he prayed, you know, for us to be one as he and the Father, they are one. Even, you know, in the houses, in marriage or kids or whatever, when there is no unity, it's division. And the enemy always, you know, he came to to kill and to destroy. But you know what? Because this is our problem. We are the one that, you know, we allowed. And because the Bible says that don't give the enemy place. When we give him place, guess what? And this is my always, you know, what I'm saying. And always, you know, I need to remind myself, when we give him place, he will take it. And then don't rebuke him, you know, go to God and say, Lord, forgive me. Because many times in our life happen, and then the end, you know, this from the enemy. No, it's not from the enemy. It's from me, because I'm the one that, you know, I opened the door for him. So this is what the disciples, you know, they did. They went to the upper room, and they stayed there. You see, waiting. But they're waiting, you know, for something good. It's not lottery or it's not, uh, you know, playing games or whatever. Waiting. Because they love him. And they knew that, you know, Jesus, he loved them to the end of the cross. When Jesus, you know, he ascended back to heaven in the same chapter, Acts 1, you know, the angels, you know, they came and they said, why you are staring? The same way that Jesus, you know, he went, he will come back. And this is, you know, their, their vision and this is their passion that Jesus, one day he will come. And this is when we, when we read the letters of Paul and Peter and John. In that time, they believe that Jesus is coming back in their time. What about us today? We lost it. We lost it, Pastor Larry. Because, you know, the Bible said that keeping your passion toward him, boiling hot. You see, this is what the Bible says in Romans. And the Bible said that, you know, the love of God is poured by his Holy Spirit in our, in our hearts, that we can love him. I cannot love him without him to give me his love, that I can love him back. You know, I cannot you know, spend time with him if he cannot give me. I cannot, you know, open the Bible and read it. Everything, it's from him and about him and to him. There is nothing, it's from me. It's all about Jesus. Because, you know, the Bible, what Jesus, you know, he says, because, and because iniquity or lawlessness, and this is the day that, you know, we are left, that the love of many, many will grow cold. And Jesus, you know, he spoke, you know, to the church of Laodicea. Maybe soon I will be finished. It's okay? You see, I don't want to, know, to be lukewarm. You see, because Jesus, you know, he's serious. He says, I will spit you out. Make him sick. You see, my heart desire is to be hot for him every day and every single day. Not to be cold. I don't want you know, to be cold. I don't want him to be lukewarm, you know, to, to come to church Sunday and I will be hot worshiping him and the next day I will be warm again. No. It's decision. But, you know, we think that, you know, the end days, you know, that wars and number of, numerous of wars and earthquakes and all the stuff what's happening, you know, today, 
in the world. But you know what? I always you know I said the sign that Jesus is coming because the cold of money will grow cold towards God and towards each other who don't care anymore. So let me go quickly to Acts 2. I love these verses, what says that they hear the voice, Acts 2 from verse 1. Just, you know, I will go just, you know, to the words that, you know, I feel just, you know, to share with you. I don't want to read it all. But they hear the voice, number one. They hear the voice that they will wake up. You see? The, the voice of God. And how many times, you know, in our life, you know, will come Sunday and we'll hear the voice of God. What we'll do about it? You see? This is a question. After the voice, it was wind or mighty wind. And we know that, you know, the mighty wind, it's in Hebrew. I don't want, you know, to, it's not a Hebrew lesson. But the word, he, the word in Hebrew, wind and, and spirit, it's the same word. It's ruah. So the wind will come, will blow in our life. I believe from all my heart, John, Jesus, you know, when he talks to Nicodemus, and he told Nicodemus one thing, the wind will blow, but we don't know where it, where it goes and where it comes from. And this is the same way in the Holy Spirit. You know, always I said, when the wind blow in my life and in everybody's life in this place, guess what? It will be like a mighty hurricane. And the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the wind of the Holy Spirit will drive everything away from our lives. You see? This is the wind. And the, the favorite one, it's the fire. What is the fire? Why the fire? What is the fire for us? You know, I, um, I love, you know, the, um, the old-fashioned songs or read, you know, about revivals, you know, in the old days, 17, 18, 1900s. But there is one, uh, his name is William Booth, B-O-O-T-H, I think. He is a Salvation Army, what do you call it? Commander or like this? Yeah? So he wrote, and this is amazing, and this man, he is a Methodist. But he is on fire for God, and he is the first one that he wrote the song about the fire. And uh, I need to find it. I wrote just a few words. He wrote, you know, about the fire, that, you know, how much, you know, we need the fire. What the fire of God, you know, do in our lives. And again, you know, I think, you know, all of us or most of us in this place, you know, we have this mentality that, you know, the fire or, or the power of the Holy Spirit is just, you know, for one reason, is for the gifts. No. The fire of God is to burn every trace of sin in our lives. You see, the fire of God will burn everything that God, he doesn't please in our lives. And we need, you know, every day, you know, to come to him and to ask him, burn everything in me. You see, it's not, you know, once a year. We are not celebrating, you know, Passover once a year and just, you know, uh, you know, just you know, to come to God, you know wherever is needed, you know, once a year and that's it, God, you know, the rest of the year, you know, I can do whatever I want and, you know, I can go wherever I want and I can speak whatever I want. No, it's wrong. You see, the fire of the Holy Spirit is to burn everything in us. And this exactly, you know, why, that, why the disciples and I love, you know, about it. And this, my, the heart, my heart crying out every day to God, that God change me. Why, 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 why when they have this experience with God, the uh, the, all these disciples, 120, when they went out, what the Bible says, you know, about them, you know? Yes, you know, they were speaking tongues. You know, I talked with a few here. You know, number one, the after, you know, this experience, they have one, one thing from God. They have the purity in their life. Because God, by the Holy Spirit, by the fire of the Holy Spirit, burn everything in them. They become holy as He is holy. When they went out, the Bible said that they can smell Jesus, they can talk Jesus, they can feel Jesus, they can do anything. And I love, you know, and I shared before, when Peter and John, they went to the temple at 9 o'clock. And this is the same time that Jesus, when he died on the cross at 3 o'clock in that time, or in our time. <clears throat> what they told, what Peter, you know, he says to, to this man, that, you know, he was laying down in the, in the door of uh, the temple and in, in, exactly on the door. He says, look at us. The Peter, you know, he doesn't say, oh, you know, I'm a sinner man and I'm weak and I'm tired and I am this. I have a lot of things in my life. I'm still carnal, but you know what? I will tell you about Jesus, that Jesus is the only one that he can heal you. No. You see, he says, look at us. 
And you know, this is what, this what I need, and this is what we need. That, you know, to tell the people, when we have Jesus, you know, in our lives 100%, and we are, we are for him and with him, guess what? We can do the same as Peter, and he says. It's not, you know, proud, but no. Because we will give the glory to God. Because God, you know, he wants to receive all the glory when we tell the people about him. So this is, you know, the experience of the Acts 2. That it was purity. The church was purity. How I know? Read later, you know, a few chapters later. When Hananiah, when, how is that in English, brother? Hanania and Sapphira? Hananias and Sapphira. What, what they did? They was, you know, member in the church, in the local church. And they sold. They knew that, you know, there is, you know, at that time, you know, in Jerusalem in the year 70, you see, when, when they destroyed Jerusalem in that time, they said at least 1.5 billion Jews, they get killed. So the Christians in that time, they was in bad, bad, bad life. They doesn't have anything. And it was persecution for the church in Jerusalem. But, you know, the apostles, you know, they said that, you know, all these rich people in Jerusalem, they can sell and they can divide the money with the needy people in Jerusalem, with the needy people, you know, in, not only in Jerusalem, in all the land there in that time. Because the per persecution, it was all over. So what these, you know, this uh, two couple, you know, sweet couple, you know, what they did, you know, they sold, but they hide. They lie. And Peter, you know, Peter, you know, when, when he's full of Jesus, you know, there is no, there is no way that, you know, darkness will pass him without he will know about it. So he says that, you know, why you lie? And they said, did this the same money that, you know, you sold? And they said, yes. She, you know, he says, yes. And then, you know, right away, God, you know, he strike him. Because God, our God, he's holy God. And the Bible said that, you know, be holy as he is holy. God, you know, will show us that over and over in, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that God, when, he come, when Jesus, he will come back, the judgment of God will start in his house. Why, you know, there's people, believe me, you know, if people, if God, you know, he will strike people dead because of their lying or cheating or bad or whatever, how many people they will stay in the church? You see, if God, you know, he will strike as he's, he strike Miriam, Moses' sister, when she start talking about Moses, who are you? But you think that, you know, just, you know, God, you know, he will put you to be charge, uh, charge on us and God, you know, he will put you to be a leader? She started talking, but not about Moses. She was against God. And God, you know, he strike her with this disease, leprosy. And then Moses, you know, he went back to God and he was crying. God, he says, no. She will be in the tent for seven days. You know, believe me, if God, you know, he will strike us again, oh boy, Pastor Larry, you know, he will spend months and months, you know, in that church, you know, praying for people for healing. And everything, you know, in the Bible, you know, it says, you know, for us to learn. Because God, you know, he says, don't touch my anointing. So the Bible, you know, the book of Acts, you know, this is what I love. And I will go back and I will finish soon. You know, this is different and this is what I learned for almost 40 years walking with the Lord. In hard way, in good way and hard way. In easy way and hard way. But, you know, I thank God for everything. Because I know one thing that God, he is after me and God, he loves me. You see that the problem between Saul and David, it's one thing for me, what I learned. Maybe every one of you, you have different opinion, but it's okay. King Saul, you know, he won the anointing to just to use God with the gifts, but he doesn't know God. You see, you know, to open churches or to be in the ministry, you know, it's fine. But you know what? It will be bad if just we need our name to be lifted or to be recognized or people that will say, oh, Thank God for you, brother or sister. But King David is different. King David, his anointing is for one thing. And you will read it. Don't take my word, but go to the Bible. Go to Psalm, Psalms, the one that you know, he wrote. Go to and read his story and his life. He, he wants, he have the anointing of the Holy Spirit in his life for one thing, to know God. And David, you know, Saul, when he sent, when he disobeyed, how many times, you know, Saul, uh, uh, Sam, uh, Samuel, you know, he told them, go and wait for me. Don't uh, do the sacrifice. So he went there and he become a priest. And this is what not God, he told him not to do it. It's not for you. You are a king. You are not a priest. So Samuel, you know, he came back and he says, what, what you did? Why this? You broke God's law or God's word. 
So he did it again. You know, God, you, you know, God, you know, he gave him another chance. Maybe, you know, the second chance, you know, he will repent or he will come back to God and he will say, forgive me, God. But Samuel, you know, he says, go and kill Amalekites and their king too. But what, uh, Sam, but what Saul, you know, he did? He went and he killed all the weak ones. And he brought the good ones, the good sheep and cows and all this stuff. And even, you know, he brought the king himself. And you know, when I think about it, I say, you know, how many times in our life, when we come to the altar, you know, we give God the bad things in our life, the things that, you know, we don't want in our lives, and we'll keep the good things that we like in our lives. You see? And that all, Samuel, you know, there, you know, he told him, forget about it, you're done. God, he rejected you. And God, you know, he will put David instead. And the amazing part that, you know, in the beginning, you know, just a few chapters before, you know, he had the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says clearly that he changed, you know, to be a different man, but different man from outside, not from inside. People that will be touched from outside, but inside it's the same. But King David, you know, when King David, he get anointing with the Holy Spirit, it was different. He knew God face to face, heart to heart, spending time with him, even, that, even though when he ran away, Maybe we'll go to all these places, Pastor Larry. You know what, David, you know, he was hiding and just crying out to God and all this. But you know what? This relationship between he, him and God will never, ever, and always, you know, I said, the only thing that, you know, will bring me back to God every time I will be away from him or cold or lukewarm is my relationship with him because I know God. You see, I have this relationship with him intimate relationship with him. Some people maybe that doesn't understand what this intimate relationship with him. You need to try it. You need to see how God is good. His presence is real. His love is real. So because this, you know, the disciples, they have this experience with God. They have this purity, holiness, and I shared, you know, before, purity, persecution, and prison. You see? Can they be millionaires? Absolutely. Can they go after money and houses and all this? Absolutely. But no. They knew. They knew the secret. What does it mean, you know, to follow Jesus? Because, you know, unfortunately today, you know, we measure ourselves. Or we measure, you know, actually we measure our faith. How much we have, then, you know, how much faith we have. Because the Bible says, and... I will finish, brother. Sorry. Because the Bible says, you know, in the end, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, for people, they will, in the end, the last days, in our days, they will be love only themselves. You see, lovers of money, proud, abusive, ungodly, unlovely, unloving, unforgiven, slanders without self-control, haters of good. You see? And no one in this place you know, can tell me, no, this is not what we have today. Why we need the fire? Because, this, you know, we need the fire of God in our lives. That we can pray. We can read the Bible. We can have it, this intimate time with him. Because, this, you know, we need the fire of God in our lives. And always, you know, I said, and I'm not shy, Pastor Larry, that, you know, when I come to God, you know, I said, Lord, I'm desperate for you. Because this is what he says. He says, blessed those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You know, when I'm desperate for him, you know, I'm desperate for him. You know, when I'm sick, you know, I will go to the doctor and the first thing that the doctor, he will say, open your mouth. I don't have appetite, doctor. Open your, open your mouth and he will see, you know, if there is my throat or whatever. And we are the same thing. You know, I will bring you to the word of God and the Holy Spirit. You know, he is the only one who will touch the heart this morning, not me. You know, when we are sick spiritually, you know, we don't have any more appetite, you know, to read the word of God and to pray. We can come to the ch church, but it will be because maybe we are shy, you know, what the people, they will say. But you know what? God, you know, he wants us, you know, to be healthy, to be strong. We need the fire of God that the fire will burn again everything. Our need, desperate for God and with God. And this always, you know, my heart desire with God. And I shared many times before that I will tell him, God, I'm desperate for you. If you don't want to change me, take me. This is my prayer all the time, all these years. And I mean it from all my heart. I'm not playing games with God or just, you know, 
tell him words. No, I'm telling God what I have in my heart. Because I want to start right with God and to finish right with God. Till he comes back or till he called me back home. I want to be right with God all the time. So always, you know, in my life, I never, you know, say enough for me, God. Maybe I will tell him one time or few times happened in my life that when Pastor Larry, you know, he shared many times you know, about his experience, about the hand of God, and I will say, God, it's too much. I can't anymore. You see? But when we are in God's presence, it's in Hebrew, it's his presence or his glory, it's kavod. Kavod means heaviness. You will feel the heaviness of God or the glory of God in your life. And you will say, because our flesh cannot take it anymore. You see? And this is what we need. We need, you know, God, I believe from all my heart, there is people in this place, they said, Lord, there is much more of you. It's not just, you know, about singing or raising hands or whatever. There is much more of God for us. And God desire, you know, God his desire, you know, to show us more and more. And again, you know, this verse, like, you know, I love, you know, King David, what he says, longing for God, going after God, as the deer, wake up in the morning, the Lord is my light, my salvation, the Lord is my shepherd. He doesn't say the Lord, our shepherd, no. He never said our, you see, but when he come to God, he will say me, God, you are mine. The Lord, you are my shepherd. You are my food. You are my, my water. You are my, my strength. You are my healing. It's not for the, for the person he sits next to you. And this is what, you know, this is what God, you know, he put in my heart. And I believe again, you know, from all my heart, you are here in this place. Not because you want to come here, but because God, you know, he brought you this morning. And this is, you know, the invitation is for those who hunger and thirst, you know, for him. You know, you want to come to the altar, you can come. And we'll pray for you, and, or you can spend time with the Lord, but don't be shy. You know, Jesus, you know, he carried the cross, he carried the cross, or his cross in Jerusalem for at least one mile away to the crucifixion. And us, you know, today in this place, you know, we are shy, you know, even to walk 20 feet away from the altar. Jesus, you know, he was beating up and he carried the cross for us. Jesus, you know, he went to the cross and he was naked. For us, and many times in our life, you know, pride, maybe, or what the people, they will think about me to come to the altar. Maybe I'm a sinner. You know, they can think whatever they want, because this is between me and God. Amen? Amen. Come, brother. Amen. Did you enjoy that this morning? Amen. Why don't you ask you to stand with me? You know, one of the things that we know is that our walk with the Lord, our walk with Christ is one of faith. And sometimes in faith, we tend to think that we should feel something. Well, that's not faith. Faith is just knowing, even if I don't feel it, I just believe it. Amen. Sometimes you'll feel great, and sometimes you don't. But you know what? Don't let that shake your faith. Your faith is believing that God is true to His Word, and that God is true even with what He said. One of the things that we see in the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 18, Paul the Apostle encourages us to be filled with the Spirit. And I really believe that when we hunger and thirst for righteousness and we hunger and thirst for Jesus, He will fill you. He will fill you. And one of the things that we tr truly believe is that we can receive a fresh infilling by faith. It's by faith that we can say, like the song they sang earlier that says, Give me Jesus. And we could come to this altar and we could just say, Lord, fill me. I want more of you. You see, you can never have enough. Amen. And, and he, can, he can fill your heart this morning. And if you don't know Jesus, you can ask him, Jesus, come into my life. I see what you've done in people's lives and I want that. I want you. And he'll do that. 
He'll come into your life and He'll change you. Just like what Brother Ben says. When the Holy Spirit comes into our life through the presence of the Holy Spirit, He transforms us. It's all by faith. Faith. Faith is for all I trust in Him. F-A-I-T-H. For all I trust Him. So I want to ask you this morning, if you're hunger, hungry for Jesus, you know, we're going to open up this altar and we're going to ask you to come and just stand up here with us. Amen. And I pray that before we leave this morning, we can just say, Jesus, I want more of you. Give me Jesus. Would you just close your eyes? Lord, I really believe that what you spoke this morning to us about on this day of Pentecost, this is the weekend of the, the celebration of Pentecost, of what happened in Acts chapter 2, 50 days after the resurrection. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit changed the lives of those 120. And those 120 believers in the upper room, Lord, they changed their world. On that day, Peter spoke, and 3,000 people came to know Jesus. And Peter told them, repent and be baptized. And they all repented, and they were baptized. And you added to the church as of that day. Well, Lord, today we pray that, Lord, on this day that you would once again, by the power of your Holy Spirit, fill us. And we're going to come by faith. And we're going to open up our cups within our hearts by faith. And we're going to ask you to just fill us with Jesus today because we want more of you. So as the worship team leads us in that song they, they taught us earlier, Lord, may we come to this altar with hungry hearts, thirsty hearts for you, for you, Jesus. We love you so much and we want more of you. As they sing that song, can you come and join me? And let's just... Let's just sing that song, and by faith, let's just ask God, God, fill me with your spirit today on this day of Pentecost. Fill me with your spirit. Come on up. Amen. Give me Jesus. Let's just let that be our prayer. Let's let that be our prayer. Give me Come on, let's sing it. 